We have talked about our Siamese or Thai history quite much since the beginning of doing ancient tales audiobooks. Today, let's study history from somewhere else apart from our own country. Kana Laboratory team is really into the real history overall anyway. So we are going to introduce the new playlist called World History, where we will put the interesting stories regarding the other part of the world's ancient knowledge. We start with today's episode, The Last Queen of Myanmar, Queen Supayalat. Welcome to Ancient Tales Audiobooks, where we keep tales alive and forever. Queen Supayalat was the royal daughter of King Mindong and Queen Alinandor, or the Lady of the White Elephant. She was born on the 13th of December 1859 in Mandalay, Myanmar, and passed away at the age of 65 on the 24th of November 1925. Her original ancestor actually was one of the commoners since her grandmother was the merchant in the local market until she became one of the crown prince Bajidaw's royal maids. Then Queen Supayalat was born as a princess. She got married to her half-brother King Tibao, who was born from a different mother. King Tibao, when he was a prince, he was the favorite one of Queen Alinandor, the mother of the queen, among the other two princes who could have the capabilities and skills as the successors to the throne after their father too. Thereby, Prince Tibao had taken the throne after King Mindong since he was unwell and still alive. Rumor has it that Queen Alinandor was the one who was behind all of this. She started to gather those courtiers and noblemen who were on her side to put the other prince and the princesses in jail. The situation had become even worse when King Mindong passed away. She started to execute those who were not related to her nor agree with her decisions up and down the family trees. Some said that the massacre had to be taken quite long up to three days since it was to be done only while at night in the darkness. In addition, the feast was incorporated in its place as well to distract the local people from what was really happening inside the palace. King Tibao himself was intoxicated by the drinks which provided for him in particular to ensure that he would not disturb this kind of action. Some said that during the three days massacre, there were lots of howling dogs outside until the locals could not sleep properly. The dead bodies were dumped together in the big pit next to the pallets, covered by the soil on the ground. Approximately three days after that, the pit was getting humped due to the dead body being swollen. The real elephants were used to stamp the hump down, but still it kept popping up, thereby all the dead bodies had to be buried in other locations or thrown off in the river. It may sound really cruel and immoral, am I right? Still, these tales were the story in the past we presented here only what we learned from the historical record or else which we found only. Furthermore, 30 years after England had colonized Myanmar, King Tibao passed away in Ratanakiri city, India, where his body was buried. Then Queen Supayalat was invited to return to Myanmar and allowed to stay in royal residence only where the government provided in Yangon city. The queen opened her residence for a public to be able to talk to her again. She was into well with one of them called Mong Gale, who was the local news reporter. In September 1924, there were statements written by Mongale as follows. I squatted and bowed before Her Majesty as per the traditional norms since she was the queen and still maintain her royal title until the day I met her. I was so thrilled and excited to meet her on that special occasion. She asked who am I. Her royal son-in-law answered that I was a local news reporter. Then she talked to me directly. Make yourself at ease. Ask ahead whatever you wish to know. I started with. How have you been, Your Majesty? She replied, I'm fine. How old are you right now? She replied, 65. Then surprisingly, she asked me, Is it true that our people think I was the one who commanded the massacre of those other houses, prince and princesses, a long time ago? I replied, Yes, Your Majesty. After she heard that, she replied, You know what? That was not true at all. When it happened, I was just a child at that time. I could not do any of that. After I listened to her, I found it pretty makes sense. Since King Mindong, her royal father, passed away on the 1st of October 1878, which was the same date as King Tibao, her half-brother, and royal husband had taken the throne. Therefore, Queen Supayalat, who was born on the 13th of December 1859, she was only 19 years old at that time. So, what she said might be true. Anyhow, we are speaking about ancient history, which mostly the ones we talk about have all passed away. They do not have an opportunity to speak or defend themselves. Please use your own judgment and learn it together with our prejudice nor biases. More or less, hope you find this episode useful and entertaining. Thank you for watching Ancient Tales Audiobooks, where we keep tales alive and forever. Please do subscribe, like, share, and put the bell notification on. Then you will not miss any of the new episodes. Bye for now and have a good day.